sulci of the heart. The heart is hollow structure on the interior. It is divided into four chambers. These divisions create grooves on the surface of the heart. These are known as sulci. The coronary sulcus are artery ventricular grooves runs transversely around the heart. It represents the wall dividing the artery from the ventricles. The sinus contains important vasculature such as the right coronary artery. The interior and the posterior interventricular sulci can be found running vertically on the respective sides of the heart that represents the wall separating the ventricles. Next is pericardial sinuses. The pericardial sinuses are not the same as anatomical sinuses such as the paranasal. They are passageways from the unique way in which the pericardium folds around the great vessels. The oblique pericardial sinus is a bland ending passageway located on the posterior surface of the heart. The transverse pericardial sinus is found superiorly on the heart. It can be used in coronary artery bypass grafting. Next is the chambers of the heart. The heart consists of four chambers, the two arteria and the two ventricles. Blood returning the heart enters the arteria and is then pumped into the ventricles. From the left ventricle, blood passes in the aorta and enters the systematic circulation. From the right, it enters the pulmonary circulation via the pulmonary arteries. First of all, I would like to discuss right atrium. The right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from the superior and inferior vena cava and from the coronary veins. It pumps this blood through the right arteriventricular orifice, which is guarded by the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Into an anatomical position, the right atrium forms the right border of the heart. Extending from the anterior medial portion of the chamber is the right auricle right arterial appendage, a muscular pouch that acts to increase the capacity of the atrium. Left atrium. The left atrium receives oxygenated blood from the four pulmonary veins and pumps it through the left arteriventricular orifice, which is guarded by the mitral wall, into the left ventricle. Into an anatomical position, the left atrium forms the posterior border or base of the heart. The left auricle extends from the superior aspect of the heart chamber, overlapping the root of the pulmonary trunk. Next is ventricles. The left and right ventricles of the heart receive blood from the artery and pumps it into the outflow vessels, the aorta and the pulmonary artery respectively. Right ventricle. The right ventricle receives deoxygenated blood from the right atrium and pumps it through the pulmonary orifice, which is guarded by the pulmonary valve, into the pulmonary artery. It is triangular in shape and forms the majority of the anterior border of the heart. The right ventricle can be divided into an inflow and outflow portion which are separated by the muscle ridge known as supraventricular crest. Next is left ventricle. The left ventricle receives oxygenated blood from the left atrium and pumps it through the aortic orifice which is guarded by the aortic valve into the aorta. In the anatomical position, the left ventricle forms the apex of the heart as well as the left and diaphragmatic borders. Much like the right ventricle, it can be divided into inflow portion and outflow portion. Layers The first is epicardium. The epicardium is the outermost layer of the heart formed by the visceral layer of the pericardium. It is composed of connective tissue and fat. The connective tissue secretes a small amount of lubricating fluid into the pericardial cavity. In addition to the connective tissue and fat, the pericardium is lined by on its outer surface by simple squamous epithelial cells. Next is myocardium. The myocardium is composed of cardiac muscles and is involuntary saturated muscle. The myocardium is responsible for the contractions of the heart. Endocardium. The innermost layer of the cardiac wall is known as endocardium. It lines the cavities and walls of the heart. Structurally, the endocardium is comprised of loose connective tissue and simple squamous epithelial tissue. It is similar in its composition to the endothelium which lines inside the blood vessels. The walls of heart. The walls of heart are structures which ensure blood flows in only one direction. They are composed of connective tissue and endocardium. The endocardium is the inner layer of the heart. There are four walls of the heart, which are divided into two categories: atrioventricular walls, the tricuspid valve, and the mitral or bicuspid valve. They are located between the artery and the corresponding ventricle. Next is semilunar valves. 
The pulmonary valve and the aortic valve are the part of the semilunar valves. They are located between the ventricles and their corresponding artery and regulate the flow of blood leaving the heart. First is arteriventricular valves. The arteriventricular valves are located between the artery and ventricles. They close during the start of the ventricular contraction systole, producing the first heart sound. They are two AV valves. Tricuspid valve which is located between the right atrium and the right ventricle. You can also see in the figure. It consists of three cusps, anterior, septal and posterior, with the base of each cusp anchored to the fibrous ring that surrounds the orifice. Next is mitral wall, also called bicuspid wall, located between the left atrium and the left ventricle. It is also known as the bicuspid wall because it has two cusps, anterior and the posterior. Like the tricuspid valve, the base of each cusp is secured to fibrous ring that surrounds the orifice. Next is the mitral and tricuspid valves are supported by the attachment of the fibrous cords, cordae tendini, to the free edges of the valve cusps. The cordae tendini are in turn attached to the papillary muscles located on the interior surface of the ventricles. These muscles contract during ventricular systole to prevent a prolapse of the valve leaflets into the art art atria. There are five papillary muscles in total. Three are located in the right ventricle and support to the tricuspid valve. The remaining two are located within the left ventricle and act on the mitral valve. Semilunar valves. The semilunar valves are located between the ventricles and the outflow vessels. They close at the beginning of the ventricular relaxation diastole, producing the second heart sounds. There are two semilunar valves, pulmonary valve and the aortic valve. First, a pulmonary valve. Located between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk, the valve consists of three cusps, left, right and anterior, named by their position in the fetus before the heart undergoes rotation. Aortic valve located between the left ventricle and ascending aorta, aortic orifice. The aortic valve consists of three cusps, right, left and posterior. The left and right aortic sinuses mark the origin of the left and right coronary arteries. As blood recoils during ventricular diastole, it fills the aortic sinuses and enters the coronary arteries to supply the myocardium. So in the end, I would like to discuss some MCQs which are related to the anatomy of the heart. So first MCQ is which of the following has thickest wall? Second, blood enters into the heart because of muscles of Third is, the opening of right atrium into the right ventricle is guarded by mitral valve is present between. And the last one question, identify the correct sequence of blood flow through the chambers of the heart. Thanks for watching.